Hi friends, and welcome to the video. If you've never seen my face before, I'm Olivia, and as you see behind me, I am a fragrance reviewer, enthusiast, whatever you like to call me. And if you have seen my face before, mwah, hi friends, welcome back. I am so excited because today I am going to be talking about one of my favorite sections of perfumes, types of perfumes, perfume notes, whatever you'd like to call it, and that is rose fragrances. I am a rose gal, and I've heard so many people say that rose fragrances are a little bit too mature, and I have something for absolutely everybody, so if you're not a rose lover, stick around because I might be able to make a rose lover out of you. And without further ado, let's get into the video. First off is one of my favorite rose fragrances of all time. This is by Juicebox and this is Siren and Sailors. And this is inspired by Amy Winehouse. The entire house of Juicebox is inspired by musicians and different works of musical art. And Amy Winehouse is absolutely one of my favorite singers of all time. So to get into the notes, we have a very beautiful, fuzzy, sweet peach but then it's made a little bit bright and sparkling in the opening with bergamot that gives it a little bit of tanginess and it has a jammy sweet rose. But then where it gets interesting is it has some boozy notes. So as this dries down, it takes on a darker quality. I absolutely love the note of suede in here. It gives it a little bit of a leathery, a little bit of an animalic touch, but it's not dirty smelling. Think of a very soft velvety suede, not like a thick, heavy car leather. So if you like a fruity, sweet, yet boozy rose, Siren and Sailors by Juicebox is absolutely incredible and the longevity is enormous. Now I'm sure you guys have all heard of the Delina line from Parfums de Marly, but specifically I have Delina Exclusive. The original is a very tart, juicy, sour rose, and this takes it in a little bit more of a powdery direction. This is a very sheer rose with a lot of powderiness, but you do get a little bit of fruitiness. So this one has pear that gives it a really juicy, intoxicating quality. So as this dries down, this is a powdery, sweet, slightly woody with a little hint of incense in the background. It's very complex. And this one is a little bit better in my opinion in fall, winter, and spring. So if you like a powdery, sweet, young, feminine rose, but you want something that's a little bit more complex, Delina Exclusive by Parfums de Marly. Taking it to the darker side of things, this is Pavilion by Andrea Mack. And this is an Icelandic niche perfume house that I absolutely adore. And they recently came out, maybe about, three, four months ago with this scent. These are extract de parfum, so they're very, very powerful. And this is taking it in a darker direction. So you have a lot of spices. You have a very, very regal saffron. You have a honey, you have oud, and it gives it almost a slightly Middle Eastern Arab type touch to it. So this is going to be your deep, sensual, dark, woody, very, very sultry rose. If you are sensitive to fragrances, I think that this one is gonna be a little bit too much for you. But if you are a die-hard fragrance lover and you are a die-hard lover of rose, this is a Rose Oud Saffron Pavilion by Andrea Mack. You will love this one. Sticking on the category of a spiced rose, I have this one. This is an absolute gem. It's called Hardines de Misfa by Un Nui Nomad. And this is quite a bit sweeter and very, very gourmand. So you have a little bit of a spicy cardamom and nutmeg that give this almost a holiday sort of feel to it. But you have ultra sweet dates, which is a very, very unusual note for fragrances. But if you've smelled a fresh date, imagine that with a thick, almost honey, syrupy, jammy rose, and a very sweet touch of almond that gives it a little bit of nuttiness. This is definitely a fall winter fragrance. I wouldn't even reach for this in spring, personally. Don't think of a candied sweetness. Think of something a little bit more sophisticated. The performance of these are absolutely incredible. This is a really cool house. So if you guys have never checked out anything from Unui Nomad, I would absolutely have you start here, Hardin's de Misfa. 
Taking things in a completely different direction, this is Rose 31 by Le Labo. Now, if you want a rose that smells natural, a little bit woody, a little bit earthy, and a little bit spicy, this one is going to be for you. This has the note of cumin. And if you've never smelled cumin, my mom would always use it in taco seasonings, which is funny because that's a very American way to make a taco. But cumin to me, and to many others, smells like body odor. I don't wanna give you the wrong impression. This is very, very natural smelling, a little bit spicy, a little bit earthy because it has that vetiver in there. And it is a really, really pretty one, very, very unique. So if you want something that's not sweet at all, this one would be fantastic. Rose 31 by Le Labo. Sticking with the more natural smelling roses, this one is very unique in my collection. This is Veronica Bai, and this is her aroma collection, and the specific scent is called Body. And she actually worked with a doctor to develop a line of aromatherapy fragrances. So these are meant to actually work in parts of your body on your chakras. She is much more eloquently spoken about the topic than I am myself, so I would suggest if it interests you to go check out her page. This is a very natural rose that's complemented with geranium that gives it a lighter, fresher feel than a very natural rose on its own, which tends to be a little bit heavy. This also has a light balmy patchouli that gives it a little bit of earthiness, but it is not that kind of dark, heavy patchouli. It is more leafy, more green. And this also has benzoin, which gives it a beautiful, sensual warmth. And what I really like about these fragrances is that when you get this on the box, there is a QR code for a meditation. So you can scan it on your phone and use the fragrance in tandem with the meditation to get the full effects of the fragrance. And another cool thing that I learned, this top is ceramic. So you can spray the fragrance onto the cap and it kind of absorbs it if you want to have the scent kind of wafting in the air. Perfect for people that like something a little bit more natural, a little bit more easygoing, and it's not going to be suffocating, and it actually has benefits in your body. So this is Body from the Aroma Collection by Veronica Bai. Next is one of my favorite categories of rose of all time, and this is a smooth vanilla rose. So this is called Smoke and Roses by Zimmer. This is an Australian house, and these are so beautifully blended. So if you like something that's gourmand, but not overly sweet, something that's dark, but not too heavy, it's just the perfect combination of rose and vanilla, but this also has a little bit of suede, a little bit of chocolate. So this one, hands down, is my favorite rose vanilla combination in my entire collection. So that is Smoke and Roses by Zimmer. Going to the more affordable side of things, this is an Arab perfume from the house of Latafa, and this is called Ajwad. And this is only about $20, but the performance is absolutely incredible. So this, again, is another rose vanilla, but it has a strong component of musk. For $20, $25, it should be illegal how long this fragrance lasts. And what shocks me is how much this reminds me of a very, very expensive fragrance by the house of EBK, which is called Ruby and Vanilla Neroli. I had a sample of that one. I really, really wanted it, but then I smelled how similar it smells to this and I was blown away. You get a lot of fruity, sweet, candied notes in the beginning, but you get a lot of amber, you get a lot of vanilla. This is a very sultry rose. And some people say that this smells a little bit synthetic to them. In my opinion, I do not agree. Sometimes we have to admit that we can be a little bit influenced by the price of things. So if you repackaged this in an EBK bottle, I guarantee a lot of people would not know the difference. Next is another affordable Arab perfume, and this is from the house of Orientica, and this is their Arte Bellissimo line. This is called Romantic. Now this is a spot on dupe to the original Delina, not the exclusive that I talked about earlier. So you get a lot of tanginess, but in this one, it's not coming from lychee, but rather from grapefruit. This is a fresh pink rose, but you also have peony that is a little bit more sheer. It's a little bit more aquatic, and it also has violet that gives a very slight, slight powderiness. But the only difference that I find from this 
and the original is that this one airs on the side of slightly more green so you get a little bit more freshness in this which i adore so these are pretty affordable you can find these for under a hundred dollars and the original delina is like 300 plus so you be the judge and this one lasts a long time so that was romantic from orientica now if you want a rose that's a little bit heavier on the musk this one is Laventer Rose by Al Haramain. And once again, this is an Arab perfume, very affordable. It has a lot of citruses in the beginning. So you get a bright, tart, juicy quality, but you also get red berries that, that gives it a very sweet, summery effect. And the rose here is very, very smooth. I'm so impressed by the quality versus the price of these fragrances. This is Laventer Rose by Al Haramain. If you like a very rich, thick, sweet, woody, ultra, ultra strong rose. You have to check out Shagaf Oud by Swiss Arabian. This is a very, very Middle Eastern profile, so it's quite bold. If you put it on your jacket, it will not come off until you wash it. And I think you can get these for about $25 on Joma shop and the quality is absolutely incredible, but it has a very, very strong component of oud. So it has a really strong, earthy, resinous, slightly dirty component, along with a praline that's very, very sweet and a thick, jammy rose. So if that sounds good to you, I would say spray with caution. That is Shagaf Oud by Swiss Arabian. If you like a patchouli dominant rose, this is Elixir 11 from Kayali. This is a very prominent patchouli with a classic red rose that sweetened up a little bit with the note of apple. I know that a lot of people say that this smells a little bit too vintage or mature for them, but I think it just smells very classy, very elegant. I have never had any performance issues with Elixir 11 because it has such a substantial note profile that patchouli is very fixative. So you have to like patchouli in order to enjoy this one. But if you're looking for something refined, very classic and elegant, I would go with Elixir 11 from Kayali. Now, if you want an elegant spiced rose, but you want something that's a little bit on the sweeter side, I would try Sweet Diamond Pink Pepper from Kayali. Now, this one is a very girly yet assertive fragrance. You have the note of pink pepper that gives it a kick a spiciness, but this has a little bit of ambery dry down to it. So although very, very sweet, it is not a candied sweetness. This is your woman in a bright pink power suit, ready to do business, but is ultra feminine. So think feminine, flirty, yet assertive. Now, if you prefer your rose to smell like a springtime garden with a lot of greenery, a lot of airiness, a little bit more sheer and natural and not so perfumey, I would go with Ameline by Fleur. Think of a garden fairy that is floating around a bushel of bright pink roses. That's what you get here. So if you like something more natural, something a little bit green, Ameline by Fleur. This brand is actually newer. This is the brand Five Scents, and this is the scent Catch Feelings. And this reminds me a little bit of Delina, but I would say maybe distant cousins. They're definitely not dupes, but if you like Delina, you might like this. This also has that tangy quality that Delina has, but this has grapefruit and it is damask rose. So it is a very natural smelling rose. And this almost has a leafy component to it. So you almost get roses on the vine. It's just a very fun, easygoing rose. So if you don't know where to start, this is affordable and this is a good option. So that's Catch Feelings by the brand new brand, Five Cents. If you want to go for something that's a little bit more on the masculine side, I would suggest this. This is actually from the masculine line. So this is from Maison Francis Kirchon and this is a la Rose Loam. This to me is a bright, fresh, green, crisp rose, but it's complemented with sage, which gives it a little bit of its masculine quality. And this has a little bit of almost an aquatic touch to it. It has almost like an aftershave type vibe to it or a fresh sort of cologne. It's very sheer, it's very airy, but it's very, very, very powerful and lasts a long time. So if you want something that's a little bit more masculine, I would go with A La Rose from MFK. 
So if you want a sweeter rose that is very cheerful, but it's not super duper heavy rose, this is Flamenco by Ramon Monegal. So this has raspberry and apple, so it has this very juicy, bright, berry-like beginning, but this also has iris. So this has a lot of powderiness. A few friends that I've showed this and my husband have all said that this almost has the smell of like Barbie doll or a toy. There's almost a little bit of a plasticky component, which personally, I adore. It's sweet, it's a little bit young, it lasts a really long time, and it's just a really fun rose that is subtle. So if that's your vibe, Flamenco by Ramon Monegal. This next one is from a criminally underrated perfume house. This is from Sphinx, and this is called Damaskina. Now, my only gripe is that it doesn't have it anywhere on the bottle, so when you look it up on the website, you can see that Damaskina is the one with the gold plate. This is a warm, smooth, sweet rose that is absolutely perfect for any season. It's sweetened up with a really succulent pear in the beginning, and this also has violet, so it adds a little bit of a powdery quality, along with a patchouli that is not heavy. So if you're afraid of patchouli, don't worry about it. If you're just looking for something sensual, warm, sweet, slightly gourmand, but not a lot. This is a perfect, well-rounded rose fragrance. Like I said, criminally underrated house. That's Sphinx, and this is called Damaskina. Another very TikTok viral popular perfume here on YouTube is Montal Intense Cafe. Now this is a rose, but it's predominantly a vanilla coffee fragrance. These are very, very, very powerful. They're very loud. They're pretty decently priced for a niche house. And some people say that these can smell a little bit synthetic, but in a way I enjoy that because of the longevity that it provides. So if you like a sweet jammy rose with some creamy vanilla and a strong hit of coffee, Intense Cafe is a beautiful, beautiful fragrance. Ooh, you guys are not ready for this one. So this is from the house of Navitus, and this is called Ediola. Navitus is a brand that collaborates with a lot of YouTubers, and they are a niche house with impeccable quality. So these are pretty affordable for a niche brand, but they perform like a $400, $500 fragrance. And this smells like if Delina Exclusive and 100 Silent Ways by Nishane had a baby, because you also have jasmine and peach. This is an absolutely beautiful, feminine, creamy, sweet, rich, luxurious rose. This is so, 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 so beautiful and lasts so long. So that's Navitus Ediola. Next is Hot Couture by Givenchy. This is the EDT version. So this is the Eau de Toilette. The original is Magnolia. This one has a little bit of rose, but it is not prominent. So this is a spicy raspberry rose with some white florals, but they're not very prominent. This is the it girl of the early 2000s. Think Paris Hilton. And the original version was worn by Amy Winehouse, which ugh, I'm so proud to have it. So if you like something that's a little bit spicy, a little bit fruity, and is rounded out with other florals, to give it a little bit more brightness, this would be a good choice. This is Hot Couture EDT by Givenchy. Now, if you want something that is ultra complex, this one is called La Capitale by Zerjoff, and this has a lot of fruity notes. This has strawberry and raspberry that give it a lot of sweetness, but it's almost condensed. Think of like a strawberry syrup with a little bit of spices, and you have this beautiful velvety rose. But on the dry down, what makes this so intoxicating and so interesting is it has this vetiver and musk, and the vetiver comes through and is a little bit earthy and almost lends itself to a leathery suede-like component. So if you want something that has a million different faces, it's going to smell very, very different from different occasions. This is just a very, very complex fragrance. So La Capitale by Zerjoff. Now, if you're looking for a rose that's a little bit more of a skin scent, this is an absolutely incredible, 
incredible skin scent. It's long lasting, but the projection is very moderate. When people come in to hug you, they'll be able to smell it and you'll have a nice little scent bubble throughout the day, but you will not be choking anybody out. So this is called Worthy by Mudo. This is predominantly a velvety soft rose. It's a little bit vanillic. It has a very strong musk and it has a little bit of lavender to, to give it almost an aromatic touch. It is very smooth, it's very velvety, and it's almost like second skin. So if you're looking for something that's very easygoing, perfect for every day, day or night, Worthy by Mudo. If you want something that is bright and bold, I would go with Wild Poppy from Nest. It's funny that this is called Wild Poppy, but this is actually a rose dominant fragrance, but it has a lot of sweetness to it. You have pear, you have raspberry, you have apricot, and to me, this smells like a bold, fruity, rosy shampoo. It's very fun, it's very vibrant, and it's very refreshing, and the rose smells very, almost, cartoonish, but not in a bad way. There is still sophistication to this, but it's just so playful and so fun. And that is Wild Poppy by Nest. If you want a sweet, dainty, powdery, musky, girly rose, I would go with Irresistible by Givenchy. This is honestly such a safe blind buy. It is sweet, it is ultra feminine, it's very easygoing, and I have reached for this so frequently. I don't know if you guys can see the dent that I have in this, and I have over 300 fragrances, and I reach for this so frequently because it is just pleasant. Like the girl next door sort of fragrance. So if you like that, Irresistible by Givenchy. Now, if you crave something that is bold, that is spicy, and it is very Middle Eastern, very oud dominant, this is Amethyst by Latafa. These are very, very affordable. This is a great dupe for Atomic Rose by Initio. It's not a perfect dupe, but for the price difference, it's absolutely worth it. So if you want something that is statement, that is eternal, it's long lasting, this is not sweet. This has a pink pepper in here that gives it a little bit of spiciness, but this is a truly Middle Eastern beastly, beastly rose fragrance. That is Latafa's Amethyst. Next is an absolute powerhouse. This is Exalté by Fumi Monet. This is a rose vanilla, but it has a very beautiful ambery dry down. This is ultra luxurious smelling. It smells expensive. It smells rich and opulent and it is eternal. The lasting power and the projection of this is just absolutely insane. So if you like a rose vanilla, but you want something complex and sophisticated, I would check out Exalté by Fumi Monet in collaboration with Bella Ora. Now, if you want a rose that's a little bit peculiar, I would try Sherwood by Memo. This is a green, woody, spicy rose that has a creamy sandalwood. To me, this smells like the combination of Amouage Guidance and Rose 31 by Le Labo. So you get a little bit of a creaminess, you get an earthiness, you get a green yet spicy natural rose. It is very peculiar. I can't say that this is my favorite fragrance, I won't lie. I find it a little bit challenging, but if you're up for a challenge, that is Sherwood by Memo. And I have saved the Mac Daddy of them all for last. This is Rose Tonnerre from Frederick Mall. Now this is your thick vintage rose water. This has notes of wine. This is vintage smelling. I think that this will be very, very mature for a lot of people. So if that's your sort of thing, you might love this. It is very, very, very long lasting, very powerful. That is Rose Tonnerre by Frederick Mall. Thank you for sticking with me for the long video. I actually have more fragrances in boxes that I haven't really got a chance to try that I know are rose fragrances, but I'm not going to crack into them in this video because I want to be able to give you guys a thorough in-depth look at my fragrances. Thank you guys so much for taking the time out of your day to watch my video today. I really, really appreciate it. It's so wonderful to have you guys here to chat with and I love chatting with you in the comments. So make sure you drop me a little line. Tell me your scent of the day. Tell me how you're doing. Tell me your pet's name. I want to know it all. If you enjoyed this, make sure that you are subscribed 
and I'll see you next Saturday, 10 a.m. PST. Take care of yourselves, my friends.